Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha with Ice Cream Fitness here. Today, I'm going to give you guys some real talk. I'm going to explain to you why people who train have problems with their connective tissue, tendonitis, snap tendons, why they have joint problems, and all of these things. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. As someone who has studied physiology, and has 17 years of experience in this field in both bodybuilding, powerlifting, and, and having trained athletes and things a bit in the past, I can tell you all of the research shows that serious training, including power training, including benching 500 pounds, builds your connective tissue and joints, if done correctly. So let's look at the most common problems. We're going to look at both training programming and we're going to look at lifting techniques. First off on that list, guys who do not inject nandrolone or any other anabolic steroid that strengthens connective tissue and joints, or who do not inject HGH, get this idea in their head that it's cool for them to lift weights five or six days a week without giving all of their connective tissue proper time to regenerate. And they'll hear me say things talking about training frequency, uh, hitting each body part three times a week, and they want to go do a push-pull six days a week or an upper-lower six days a week. And sure, if you want to deload every three weeks, you can do that, but you would make better gains just sticking to a full body and not having to deload as often. So, I mean, that is a route you can go, but you have to pay attention to your connective tissue very, very closely if you do that. And the moment you get any pain in anything, you have to take a full one-week deload or you're going to snap some shit up in the long term. So that's part of it. Guys lifting too many days per week. There is no reason that if you're a drug-free lifter that you cannot hit your maximum genetic potential that you will ever get to at the fastest rate possible training three to four days a week. There's no reason other than to snap your shit up for you to be training five or six days a week. It is fucking moronic, and there's no reason you should be doing it unless you are a genetic freak who can benefit from it. And some guys are going to mention the Hodge twins. Well, they clearly have very, very good genetics. There's no need for it. It's not even helping you. If you're on a proper program, you will have optimal muscle protein synthesis throughout the whole week on a properly set up three to four day a week system. And if you don't know how to write it yourself, you need to have someone else write one or pull one out of a book by an actual legitimate expert. Or even use like my program that I have for novices. But that is very high on the list. People do not give their connective tissue proper time to regenerate and grow in hypertrophy. These things should be getting stronger, not getting weaker or be getting inflamed. Now, next on the list is going to be technique and muscle imbalances. Right off the bat, all these guys, if you guys watch any of my videos on tricep training, whether it's the Skull Crusher one or my closed grip bench press one, watch any of those videos. I explain to you guys why people get tricep tendonitis. You watch any of my videos on pressing, I explain to you why people get shoulder issues from bench pressing or from floor pressing. I've got videos on benching for your chest that explain that I explained it in the floor press video. I explained it in my video on power benching. I explained it in my closed grip bench press video. Shoulder issues are purely a cause of improper technique compressing. Or muscle imbalances because you haven't properly built up the rear delts and the internal rotators with things like face pulls, which you should be doing. Back issues are almost always caused by people not properly strengthening their core and using bad technique. They don't learn proper form on a squat or a deadlift or any of the lifts that they do and therefore they can get lower back issues and they don't take the extra time to properly strengthen their core with heavy core work for their abdominals and heavy work for their lower back like heavy good mornings and things. Knee problems are caused one by people not learning how to squat correctly or even how to leg press correctly. They let their knees go past their toes because they don't learn proper form or technique. They don't learn how to sit back properly on a squat. They squat down instead of back and they put shearing stress on the knee joint. Same on leg presses. They'll put their legs pretty far down the slide, lets the knee go past the, the toe, and you get the exact same issue on a machine that you would still get from doing a squat incorrectly, and then you get knees that hurt. The other biggest issue there is muscle imbalances. We are naturally quad dominant from walking around. We have weak hamstrings, and particularly people who have desk jobs even have weaker hamstrings, and accordingly, people do not put enough focus on their hamstrings they need to be doing glute ham raises, deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, heavy good morning. You need to be putting more focus on your posterior chain than on your quads. And the worst offender there is the leg extension. And yes, I'm going to say it. If you are not a competitive bodybuilder, 
you have no business doing a leg extension unless you're trying to refine your quads for a show. All you are doing is hurting yourself because the leg extension puts more shearing stress on the knee than any other lift due to the angle that it's at. No other lift compares with that. And then on top of it, you're isolating the weak side of two antagonistic muscles. There's no need for you to ever do that. You need to be focusing on the hamstrings, not the quads. They're going to get enough development from all of your squatting. Maybe not enough to be a Mr. Olympia, but more than enough to have very, very impressive quads. So you need to be putting your focus on building that up so that you don't hurt your knee, not just lifting, but when you do day-to-day -day activities. And then keep from wearing the knee joint down because you have balanced forces on your knee when you're doing day-to-day -day stuff or if you run or anything else. And that's true of anything in the body because you go back and look at it, imbalanced triceps and biceps can contribute to elbow issues. Having weak rear delts and overdeveloped front delts can lead to shoulder issues when pressing and, and the same with looking at your knees. Muscle imbalances lead to joint injury not just when lifting but due to just day-to-day -day stress put on them because the forces on the joint are uneven. So you need to think about things like that in muscle balance. And this is how a natural lifter builds strong joints and connective tissue without needing supplements, without needing drugs, and without having joints and tendons that hurt from lifting and instead have joints and tendons of steel that are going to be in beautiful health when you're still 60 and 70 years old.